Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we're gonna to talk about some books that I'm gonna be unhauling from my TBR. This unhaul will feature both books that I plan on unhauling from my physical collection and also on my Goodreads want to read list. And that's really the reason I wanted to create this video. As I was updating my Goodreads this week, I realized that my want to read TBR on Goodreads was up to 279 books. And while I understand that that TBR does not take up space, uh, it does take up space mentally for me. And I think that well, I know that there are books on that list that I put on many, many months ago that I really didn't even, I, I have not been thinking about recently. I don't gravitate towards them. And there are some books that I recently put on the, put on the list, but I think I put them on for the wrong reasons and I am just not interested anymore. So I wanted to share this like brief little unhaul with you. I will start with the books in my physical collection that I am going to be uh, giving to a half price bookstore around my area. The first of those is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I read this years ago, and this is probably my first cover buy in my adult life. Because <laughs> um, I, I tend not to, as you guys know, I tend not to buy books unless I've read them or I absolutely know that I'm going to love them. I had never read anything by this author before, but I, I don't know, I just really loved this cover and I had heard excellent things about the book. However, after reading it, I do think that the author made some choices at the end of the book that I just don't agree with what I think the moral of the story is. And I, yeah, I just, I'm never going to reread it. Uh, every time I look at it, it kind of angers me that I spent full price on this book that I really don't like. Uh, if you've never heard of The Midnight Library, you do follow a character who has died um, and they are kind of stuck in a limbo with a library and within this library each book that they pull out is a decision that they could have made differently in their life and what their life would have looked like for that decision. So it's a very interesting premise but like I said there are some mental health things in here that I don't like how they were handled um, and the moral of the story at the end of the book I just don't necessarily agree with. So. I'm gonna be unhauling this one. Um, hopefully someone else will enjoy it more than I did. Next is The Final Strife. So this is actually a signed edition um, and I think it's an exclusive edition. I found it at a half price bookstore so I did not pay full price for this. Um, but it is a beautiful edition of this book. Um, I don't know if you guys could actually see that. And then, so it's a numbered edition as well. So um, someone else is going to absolutely love this. This just, I, I think this story just wasn't for me. I ended up DNFing this um, around 100 pages, I think is where I got. And I'm not gonna continue to hold this up because I know it's, it's shiny and it's messing with my camera, but you, in this story, you follow um, a couple of characters who are in a system where the uh, nobility and class hierarchy is built on blood and you follow a character who is in the lowest most cast or cast in the system and then I think the one right above it and <clears throat> it's a story of, of these two people kind of coming together to it's a rebellion story I guess I should say and I absolutely loved the character that's in the lowest cast. The character that is in the next highest one up has a little bit more going on with their storyline as far as who they actually are. And I'm not gonna tell you that because I don't wanna spoil it just in case you guys would like to go into it blind. Um, and I found their character, and I think they were supposed to be, but a little haughty, a little, I don't know, abrasive at times, and I just really did not enjoy reading from their perspective. The other character, uh, which is in the lower cast, is in like the servant cast, and they're supposed to be like a docile people. And I thought their story was really interesting, but they seemed to be very much on the sidelines, and I was not getting as much of their story as I wanted to. And so I just became kind of frustrated with the book. It's also a story that I do feel like I've read before, and I'm not opposed to reading other books that have these things intertwined that I have read before, but 
they have to feel new enough to me and be pushing me to pick up the book for me to really enjoy the story. And that's just not what I found here. But I have no doubt in my mind that someone is going to absolutely love finding a signed edition at the Half Price Bookstore where I originally bought it. So um, this one will be leaving my collection as well. Last on my physical collection that I will be unhauling is The Daughter of the Pirate King. And this book I actually purchased because I absolutely love this author, Trisha Levenseller. I have loved Warrior in the Wild. Um, I have loved the, I think it's called The Shadow Between Us. And I think there was one other book that I've read by them that I, I just have dearly loved. And I thought that surely um, a book about a pirate queen <laughs> was going to be one that I uh, enjoyed as well. And I will, I will say I did not hate this book by any means, but it very much showed its YA elements and I just wasn't impressed with the characters and some of the decisions some of the characters made. I, because I wasn't connected and I wasn't rooting for the characters. I really just had some apathy towards the storyline. Um, and so this is something I'm not going to reread. I'm not going to continue with the series. Uh, if you haven't heard of The Daughter of the Pirate King, you do follow the daughter of a pirate, and she has embarked on a journey to get something from another crew, and she has essentially made herself vulnerable to a point where she became a prisoner of this other crew, and she is using this as an experience, or as a uh, reason and an opportunity for her to spy and find this item that she's looking for on this cruise ship and the the elements in this book on the lore of sirens i did find fascinating and i do think that's probably what book two focuses on because it's called Dire daughter of the siren queen but i just i don't care enough to continue so um i think this was a three star if i remember correctly but maybe a 3.5 i can't remember um but it was, it's definitely just a book that I thought was okay. Next, we have five reads that are on my Goodreads want to read list that I am just going to remove from my shelves and clear up some space for some other books <laughs> that I am interested in reading. And I was surprised to see when I created this list that a lot of these are authors that I've either read from before or authors that I have always wanted to read from. And this particular book that I'm putting on this list have has just kind of lost my interest. So. The first of those is Middle Game. So this is by Shauna McGuire, who I've not read from before, but I desperately would like to read the Wayward Children series. I think that that series is going to be fantastic. And uh, I know, is it the last one comes out this next year, maybe? And then the series will be done. So I haven't read any of them. So I'm kind of hoping that once the last one comes out, I can kind of sit down and just binge the whole series because I know that they're they're really short. And I think I would like to get it all at once because I know that each story focuses on a different child. Anyway, this is not about the Wayward Children series. This is about Middle Game. Middle Game is a book that I tried by Shauna McGuire at least a year ago. I'm not exactly sure when I picked this up, but I read about the first 10% and it just wasn't gripping me. This story, you follow two twins, Roger and Dodger, and one of them is really good at linguistics and one of them is really good at mathematics. And that plays into some of their powers. There's also um, this kind of background knowledge that they're not human and something's going on with that as well. I just, <laughs> I know that people absolutely love this game. So this actually will get rid of two books from my want to read list because Seasonal Fears is also on there. And I know Seasonal Fears is the second book on this list. I just, I don't know, I, I'm just not interested anymore. And because of the fact that I have read 10% and it didn't grip me and I thought I would come back to it, I just, I, I, don't, I don't feel sad about letting this one go. The next book on this list is The Rage of Dragons. This is the only one on this list I think I have not read anything or I have not heard of the author nor have I read anything um, from them in the past. And I think for this book, I know that it involves a war, obviously it involves dragons, and I know that the, I think genders in the book have different magical capabilities, so women have different magical capabilities than men, and that's kind of all I know. I originally put this on my TBR because everyone was ranting and raving over it when it first came out, and I don't think I've ever heard anything bad about it. I just don't know that I'm interested in war stories right now, 
and especially war stories involving dragons i think i would prefer stories where maybe we look at dragons in kind of a different light i'm thinking of like memoirs of lady trent where we're studying the dragons at hand and i'm not saying that i'm completely opposed to war books with dragons but i i feel like at this point in time if i want to read about dragons i think i am a little tired <laughs> of the war trope with dragons i recently read uh, Fury Born, I think is what it was called. I know a lot of people have loved that and I I just thought it was okay. And so I think I, I think I'm ready to just I, I'm I'm not in the war war dragon era, I guess, in my reading phase. So I'm okay with this one going as well. The next book on my list is The Last Housewife. So I have read the book In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by this author, which is why this one ended up on my TBR. However, I have recently found out that this is a cult book. It is a thriller involving, uh, I think it's a dual timeline maybe, of a woman who in her college days was kind of taken under the wing of someone who maybe got her into some things that uh, were a little dangerous. And as she grew up, she kind of escaped that lifestyle. But now in the present day, one of her friends who was also involved in with this person has died. And I just, there have been a couple of books I've read recently that involve cults and I just don't think that those stories are for me. I find myself, it's very easy for me to kind of guess what's going to happen with those books because there are certain, I think, tropes or uh, stereotypes around cults that I just think are very easy <laughs> to predict, I guess. And so, yeah, I, I don't think I'm interested in reading this anymore. I am still interested by, in reading this author, just not this particular title. Next, we have The Cabin at the End of the World. <laughs> this is another book that I have picked up in the past. Uh, although, when I say I picked it up, I read like 20 pages of this book. I did not read very far into it at all. Um, and it just wasn't grabbing my attention at the point in time. So I put it down and I swore to myself I was going to pick it back up. This is a book by Paul Tremblay, who is an author I really would like to read from. And I have not read any of his past works. And I know that this is one of his more well-known books, which is why it ended up on my TBR in the first place. I know you follow a younger girl, maybe six or seven years old, who's on vacation with her parents, and someone approaches her at the their little isolated cabin that they're on vacation with and tells her something bad is going to happen. And that's kind of all I know about the storyline. Recently, Rainey read this and absolutely hated it and said it was a waste of time. And so I'm just not super thrilled to pick it back up. And I think that there are other things by this author I would rather try first, some of his more recent uh, books. And so I think I'm going to try that and kind of forget about this one. <laughs> the last book on this list is Witch King by Martha Wells. And I added this book, this is probably the most recent addition to my want to reads list. I added this because of the Goodreads Choice Awards last year. And Martha Wells is an author I have enjoyed in the past. I really enjoyed the first two Murderbot books, and I do want to continue with that series. I have not heard great things about The Witch King, and if I remember correctly, I think this is a pretty chonky book, and I'm just not super intrigued in the premise. Once again, I added this just because it was on the Goodreads Choice Awards nominees and I saw Martha Wells and was like, oh, well, I've liked that author in the past. I'll give that book a try. So the synopsis says, I didn't know you were a demon. You idiot. I'm the demon. Kai's having a long day. And it says, after being murdered, his consciousness dormant and unaware of the passing of time while confined in an elaborate water trap, Kai wakes to find a lesser mage attempting to harness Kai's magic to his own advantage. That was never going to go well. I just, I don't, I don't know. It, it's just not grabbing to me. And like I said, with this author, the fact that I have really enjoyed Murderbot Diaries, I think I would prefer to stay in that lane and maybe uh, clear up some space for uh, some other books that are just more front of mind for me. Because honestly, as I was going through my Goodreads list, because um, to create this video, I was just scrolling and seeing like, do I know what any of these books are? <laughs> because I knew I was going to run across them that I was like, why is that on my want to read list? And that's this book. Uh, the only reason I knew it was on my want to reads list is because I, I have liked Martha Wells in the past. And yeah, I, I just, I don't think that I will be upset by not uh, reading this one. And I will, I know I will enjoy the rest of my time with uh, this author's Murderbot series. And so 
that's where I'm going to spend my time. So those are the books that I will be unhauling both from my physical collection and from my Goodreads TBR. If any of these books you found absolutely astounding and you think I will dearly love them, please let me know in the comments down below. I could be convinced, but I kind of doubt it at this point in time, um, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you have any books on either your physical TBR or your Goodreads TBR that you're kind of like, why is this here? <laughs> I would love to hear that as well. Tell me w how you think it got on your TBR. Was it a gift from a friend? Was it a recommendation from maybe a booktube video that you just don't remember? Um, and, and if you ha just have no idea, I'd love to know that too, because I would like to know that I'm not alone in adding things to my want to read TBR that I later have no recollection of adding. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.